Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike and this is a Robert Oster ink. Uh, and it looks green there in the picture. And it is. This is Robert Oster's Green Lime. Green Lime is uh, uh, made in Australia by this dude, Robert Oster. If you're not familiar with Robert Oster colors, uh, you know, get yourself some Robert Osters because they are darn cool. And he makes a zillion different colors of ink. Uh, some of them, I think the I think the color gamut is getting smaller, like as far as differences. Because man, when you make a, a zillion greens, a zillion, a zillion turquoise, a zillion blues, a lot of them are gonna look alike. But I don't have anything that looks just like this one. Uh, and Green Lime is actually an ink that I liked so much as a sample, I had to buy a bottle of, and I got this one for seven bucks from andersonpens.com uh well actually i got it at a, at a show but uh yeah anyway got it from anderson pens you can find this online mostly for 17 bucks uh every once in a while you'll find a place with it for like 12 or 15 but there you go okay let's take a look at what this color looks like it looks like this so you'll notice that there are it appears two radically different colors here so here's the story behind that when i first got this ink in a sample I put it in this pen. This is a Platinum 3776. This is the Nice Pure. Uh, one of my very favorite Platinums, actually. And uh, as you can see, it's got that, that green ink sloshing around. This is a broad nib, and the uh, it is a little bit on the wet side. And this is a pretty medium ink, so it flows very well in this nib. And you get this color, which is this nice, uh, like, bright, but definitely readable, you know, green, green, man. It's very cool. And I loved it, and I used up the whole sample, so I bought the bottle. Uh, when I first got the bottle, I inked it up in this pen. This is a Platinum Procyon, and if you're not familiar with the Platinum Procyon, this is, um, it's in the, like, $50 range for Platinum, and it has a, a nib that's, um, very similar to that of the Platinum Preppy, although quite a lot larger and has some other stuff going on. This nib is quite fine, as you'll see here, and it's also drier. This is a fairly dry, fine nib. I, I should probably wetten it up a little bit, but, you know, whatever. It's good to have variation. Uh, and I did not care for this at all, and I thought to myself, Oh man, Mike, did you get the wrong green? And I looked at the sample vial, like, no, no, that's the that's the right green. And I said, man, did did I somehow get a sample that was that was wrong? Uh, well, the way to fix that or to figure it out is you put it in the same pen you were using before, which is this one. And uh, nope, it's the right green. It's just these two pens give you very very different color profiles here. So you know. Uh, uh, that's the thing with ink sometimes. It's a it's a triumvirate of nib, paper, and ink, and uh, sometimes one of those things will affect the others. So, if you like this really kind of light color, and a lot of people are right right now liking this, uh, this sort of undersaturated ink tone, uh, it's not my jam, but it might be yours. So put it in a, in a lighter, uh, rather a drier or narrower nib, you'll probably get this. You put it in a wider, broader, wetter nib, you'll probably get this. So you get a lot of character here. Uh, and as you can see here, you do get some nice uh, nice shading action in here, at least a little bit. Not a huge amount uh, and no real sheen. You'll see there's this darker line here, but that's not actually sheen or anything. That's just where the ink pooled and it came out darker. So that's all you got there. No, no uh, Nothing weird. Uh, on uh, on the 20 pound paper, this sink was pretty darn good. Here it is on the 20 pound sample, and you can of course see this stuff over on my blog, inkdependence.com as well. Uh, and I actually think that the fine nib is okay on this paper. It's still lighter than I prefer. I still like the darker lime, uh, green lime action going on here, but still pretty darn good. And this is of course 30% recycled 20 pound paper from Staples, it's just like regular bog standard copy paper. On the back. Uh, you'll see it actually performed very well. The wetter, broader nib had some, uh, I don't know, a few spots bled through and there's some ghosting or whatever, but no big deal. And the finer, drier nib, no problems at all, handled it just fine. In fact, I think you could probably use both of these and use both sides of even this crappy copy paper. But uh, yeah, real good on this stuff. So well done on that. Um, when it comes to writing samples, I more or less tell the same story I told before, which is that uh, I don't really care about this ink color much at all, but I really like this one. So this is another part of the story, is that if you uh, have an ink and you put it in a pen, you're like, oh, I hate this ink, uh, you, might, you might benefit from putting it in a different pen just to see how it goes. So, you know, there's, uh, there's that little tip. Um, let's go ahead and do the water test, then we'll look at it on different papers, and then we'll, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see uh, a whole bunch of different... Um, greens that are close to this. All right, let's get some water here. Let's get a lot of the words. Handy dandy pipette. 
All right. I am not expecting much in the way of water resistance. I don't think I'm going to get it uh, because, uh, well, you know, it's a green. It's a light green. It's undersaturated and all this jazz. So let's see what we get here. Get a lot of green on my paper towel. Yeah, come on. There we go. Uh, yeah, not much left. Not much left at all. You get a little bit left up here in the words. You can still kind of read that, but I don't know. It's not looking good. And down here in the little crosshatch, seems like it mostly came up. So, yeah, almost zero water resistance from this ink. Not a shocker, but uh, something to be aware of if you care about special properties in ink. Here is the chromatography for this ink. You can see it started down here. Mr. Nose, don't jump on my computer. It started down here, and... Uh, uh, it uh, pretty much all fled up the page, but there's really not much else going on in here aside from green You get like this it looks like maybe a super bright yellow in there, but I think that also could just be uh, Maybe the green fading out. Maybe it's just a little left behind, but yeah, not much going on in here uh, you, uh, Well, actually I take that back under this much light you can see the blue here So yellow and blue do make green it turns out there's that super bright blue tinge you get the top of these sometimes I actually didn't really see that until just now all right so let's see how this worked on some other papers. Uh, firstly, uh, here I have a ink journal. This is a Tomoe River ink journal, which is uh, a really good way to keep track of your inks. If you're not familiar with these, get you some ink journals. Uh, and here it is on Tomoe River. And you can see here the fine dryer nib is, uh, this is actually where I was like, oh no, I made a mistake because this is way too light for me. Uh, just, it doesn't soak into the paper, of course, because it's Tomoe River and it doesn't really do that. Uh, here, I uh, uh, I was like, mm, okay, it's a little bit better. I think this is this is quite a lot better. But yeah, fine dry nib on here, too bright for me. Not really, not super readable, honestly. Secondly, we've got it here in an Inky, Inky Fingers currently inked book. Look uh, below for uh, links to these uh, these currently inked journals because these are very helpful. If you're like me and you keep a lot of pens inked at one time, invaluable resource. Uh, so here it is in the fine nib right here. Uh, pretty bright, although readable, I think. So you can use it on this paper. It soaks in a bit more, and so you get more of the color. And then here with the broad nib, I think this looks great. This is the kind of green that I really, I really dig. In fact, you get a little bit of edge shading maybe here where it goes down heavier. So yeah, very cool. Looks good in there. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at a whole bunch of different colors of green that are in this area. Here on my Colodex card here is green lime. Uh, then next to it, let's put a uh, another bright green. I'm gonna use. We'll just look at two right now because that's all the room I have in my my viewfinder. And uh, Diamine's Calligraphy Passion is a German exclusive, German market exclusive. You can get it at places like Fountain, was it Fountain Federer, and these kind of places fairly inexpensively. Um, but uh, I haven't actually used this yet, and that's mostly because it's lighter than green lime, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this. So we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll get around to using calligraphy passion sooner or later. Uh, then let's keep going with uh, light greens. Here's Lamy's Charged Green, which was the limited edition color mm, two years ago, maybe? And uh, yeah, again, way too light. Just, just whoa. <laughs> whoa, too light. Like a highlighter ink, that Charged Green. And then another uh, Robert Oster. This is Sublime, and Sublime, Sublime is an ink that I need to try in uh, in bigger nibs. I think maybe I, I don't. What did I? Let's see. I've got it. Mm, I don't know. I've used it in M800 where I kind of liked it, and a Bexley Broad where it was kind of okay. I don't know. I think it's maybe a little too yellowy for me. I'll do a review on this eventually, but uh, <laughs> I don't have anything. I don't have it in anything right now. Uh, so there we go. Actually, this is one I bought sight unseen because I like charged or green lime so much, I think. so. Uh, then here is Irisuzuku Chiku Rin, uh, and it's pretty close, actually, to uh, Sublime. A little more yellow, I think. Let's see how it is here. Yeah, it's getting, it's like a darker version of Lamy Charged Green, actually, when you look at them all together. But green lime, much greener than this. Uh, and then let's go, uh, here's darker. This is uh, Diamine Meadow which is uh, a really beautiful green. I like Diamine Meadow quite a lot. And then over here, let's put another one of these. This is uh, Ackerman's Dutch Masters uh, Sap Green. Sap Green, I'm not gonna try it. Sap Green, probably. But uh, I think this one is a little bit yellower than Green Lime when it comes right down to it, and a little bit yellower than this as well. I haven't used this one in a long time, but it's a pretty cool ink. All right. 
Uh, here is Diatramentus's Moss Green. I think Diatramentus is one of those ink brands that doesn't get enough recognition. Uh, I forget about Diatramentus quite a lot. I just haven't had a chance to use much of it recently. And then here's Sailor Story as Clown, which I think when you write, let's see, do I have a writing sample? I don't. Uh, but I think when you write with this one, it's just too pale. Uh, it's a it's a nice green for mixing. The Sailor Storias mix really well. This is a pigmented ink, but uh, I think I think on its own it's a little too light. And then lastly but not leastly, this is uh, a brand that maybe you've heard of if you're in the U.S. and if you're not in the U.S. you probably have. This is another German brand. This is Seitz Krusnach, and um, this is um, uh, well lemon green, so green lime basically <laughs> in uh, or lime green really in uh, in German. So uh, fairly close in color, I think. Uh, you can find this through Sites Kruznach's site or sometimes on Amazon, but they come in these big bottles that look like they're bottles of brandy or something, so it's pretty cool. I haven't actually had this in a pen, but it's pretty darn close, maybe a little bit maybe a little bit lighter than a green lime, but we'll see how it goes if I ever get it in a pen. All right, so that has been Robert Oster's Green Lime, and uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful ink that I think you probably ought to try out if you like these sort of light, bright green inks, because it's pretty great. All right, I will see y'all later. Peace out.